So there's nothing really special about the seize and release. We already saw how you can apply the seize and release inside the move by transporter. So let's replace this by a new seize and a release. And it will be the same. So this means that the move by transporter will not be the one going to the agent. It's going to be the seize that goes to the agent. So let's add a seize transporter. And you have to select the fleet that you're seizing and in that case you're not selecting this, the fleet here anymore you're just using the destination meaning that this is just a move to nothing else and we will define a release transporter here there's nothing new on, in all this and if you use the process modeling library you already know how to, def to how to use seize move to and release so if you run the model again we'll see that everything works normally as it was working before. Now let's add this as an obstacle again and let's see how the minimal distance to obstacle affect the model. If you put 100, if you put really big numbers, it doesn't really work so well. Uh, if you run it, you will see that the, the forklifts will go through it, around it, no matter, like, not respecting really these 100 meters. If you limit the speed near the obstacle to 0.1 and you run it and we change the minimal distance to obstacle to 10 for example you will see that there's a change in speed when the forklifts get close to the conveyor. Other parameters or actions that we see here are not very different than the ones you find in the resource pool so we won't go through them but we will see the density map. The density map is something you can use in particular when you have free space navigation type. And it's very simple, you just drop the density map here and it will automatically be used in the model. You just need to define if you want to use it for transporter or pedestrians. Uh, this is not new for the material handling library, so you should know how to use it already, but we can define it here in transporters as well. So if you run it really fast, you will see that the density map is created. We also have the transporter control. For most of the libraries, we have a control or settings that are available that control things that are not defined in the blocks. So for example, you can avoid paths, avoid nodes, and include paths and these choices will apply to all the transporters that you work with. This transporter control nevertheless is only used for path guided navigation so we will, need, we will need to change this path to path guided. We will remove this because it doesn't look so good and we will remove the conveyor because we don't need it anymore. Now let's explore the options here. For example, let's say that uh, you want, do want forklifts to use this node. This node is node 16, right? So you can say that you don't want them to enter to this node, so that means that if node, and you can see here in the, in, in the bulb that you can use node as the element equals node 16. If it's not equal to to node 16 you can enter otherwise you can't so the forklifts will not be able to enter that node now this can cause a lot of problems because for example this forklift is trying to enter that node and just can't so these forklifts are uh, blocked here forever basically any logic doesn't calculate the route based on whatever you chose here so you have to be careful it's the same with the path if you don't want to select a path, for example, this path is path 26 and in the transporter control I use here, I can use path, then you have more or less the same problem. And you will see that these two forklifts, for example, they want to go in here, but they can't. The same with this one. And they are blocked forever. 
because any logic doesn't account for your conditions here in order to choose the route. It's not the same here. You can avoid paths and nodes, and let's avoid this path, and let's avoid this node as well. And when you select this, the thing here, and let's keep this automatic, if you select the nodes and paths here, any logic will consider them as not being part of the whole thing. So the forklifts will not get blocked because they will never try to even take that route, that route, that node and that path, they don't exist. So you have to be careful when you select a custom navigation because that could cause problems. Now, the resolve com collisions, uh, it's a bit tricky because if you don't resolve collisions, that means that you may have errors when there's a collision coming. So if you, if you go here, you will see that these two guys are going to collide. There's a collision detected, but any logic is not resolving this collision. So there's nothing you can do really. I have never used this as false, and I don't really see why you would use it as false. But let's go back to the custom one, and let's remove path 26 and node 16. But let's now choose a variable here. Uh, let's call it variable, it doesn't matter. It's going to be a boolean, false to start with. And if the transporter control, so if the variable is true, then this will be true. Otherwise, this will be, if we run the model, you will see that these guys are blocked, right? Because the variable is false. Now let's add a button that changes the value of that variable variable equals true and let's run it again now we have the forklifts blocked there but if we press the button they are free so that means that you can select different conditions for making one or many paths available for the forklifts to go through them or not and you can change these conditions on runtime